A warm welcome to your Barbados Today News Update for Monday, March 21. Prominent attorney at law Gregory Nichols is the new government senator. His return to the upper chamber comes on the heels of a dramatic turn of events at the weekend. Prime Minister Mia Motley named Nichols as the man to take up the post 24 hours after ending her bid to enable the appointment of an 18-year-old senator, as well as the appointment of two senators nominated by the party securing the second highest number of votes in the preceding general election. Her decision followed the adjournment of debate on the Constitutional Amendment Bill in the Senate last Friday, after it became clear that independent senators were not prepared to support the measure that required two-thirds majority of the vote. Barbadian scholar and student advocate Khalil Koftiwala was tipped to become the island's youngest senator. Political scientist Devron Bruce told Barbados Today the developments in the Senate were somewhat surprising. I would say that I certainly did not anticipate that this would have been the matter. And I do understand some of the arguments being raised. Personally, I don't see an issue with reducing the age from 21 to 18. I think the age difference is really inconsequential and I'm not in objection towards that. So it's an unfortunate circumstance for Kofta Walla, but it's certainly not reflective of the absence of other individuals who could have a similar impact within the Senate who are also young. Molly expressed her disappointment, noting that it is unfortunate that in the midst of global turmoil with respect to youth in crisis, Barbados finds itself at a point where embracing young people and youthful leadership is clearly still beyond its imagination. Koftiwala, in a brief post on his Facebook page on Sunday, described Nichols' appointment as an excellent choice given his grasp of issues and significant experience. Koftiwala stressed the government side still has four young senators whose contributions will make the country proud. He said he would remain a student of governance and the management of public life in Barbados. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister's office has indicated that President Dame Sandra Mason is likely to later this week name the final two independent senators that will complete the full complement of senators for this parliament. The Prime Minister had initially offered the seats to the Democratic Labour Party and Bruce suggested a turn of events could have implications for the DLP. Interestingly enough, I think that one of the major considerations has to be the fact that the Democratic Labour Party now finds itself in a circumstance where the amendment to the constitution no longer favours them because they believe the bill was pulled. So I think that is what one of the key considerations has to be regarding the developments on the matter. And in essence, we, we have to see whether or not the president will act given the piece of legislation has now been pulled. In other news this Monday, stop wasting time and get to work to effect change. Senior pastor of the Calvary Moravian Church, Reverend Dr. Adrian Smith, threw out that challenge to members of the National Union of Public Workers at the start of Public Workers Week on Sunday. At a church service to kick-start the event, Smith stressed it was time for members to get to work. It troubles me that there are people investing, there are people praying, there are people sacrificing so that some people could work. We too often forget that this nation is coming out of a season where many people of a particular skin color could not access certain jobs. We're too often forgetting that sometimes we of a particular skin color were not allowed to sit at a particular table in this country. We're too often forgetting where we've come from and the sacrifices that have been made. So National Union of Public Workers, you didn't start the union, but you stand on the shoulders and backs of many whose names might not even remembered, but they made a sacrifice so that the union could be standing today. I caution you, do not waste the time of the people who care. Public Workers Week is being held under the theme Labour Challenges Confronting the Economic, Social and Climate Changes in This Era and Beyond. And according to NUPW President Kimberly Agard, her union has survived recent tough times and is ready to confront significant challenges ahead. In 2022, this is a most fitting theme because of all the trials and tribulations that we have been experiencing not only locally, but also internationally. Many persons would know of the triumphs 
are the trials and tribulations that NUPW would have experienced only in the not too distant past. And the fact that we are here today shows that NUPW is an organization built on solidarity, built on trust, built on family, built on faith. And so that those trials, there's a song that says every L is not a loss. Sometimes it's a lesson. And I am sure that those trials would have displayed to NUPW the very fabric that we are made of. Now for today's COVID-19 update, the island recorded two more deaths from the virus on Sunday. Total deaths now stand at 329. Two Barbadian females, one a 55-year-old and the other a 60-year-old, passed away from the viral illness. They were both unvaccinated. Meanwhile, there were 73 new COVID-19 cases, 36 females and 37 males, recorded on Saturday from the 589 tests conducted by the Besta Santos Public Health Laboratory. The positive cases comprised 18 persons under the age of 18 and 55 who were 18 years and older. The number of people in isolation facilities was 47, while 864 were in home isolation. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Cure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. New Brunswick sardine fillets, boneless, ready to eat. Perfect, son. Hold on, hold on, one more. It is sardine. Well, let's see. And available in bold new flavors. Brunswick sardine fillets are giving sardines a new vibe. To regional news in Antigua and Barbuda, amid outcry about the recent hike in gasoline and diesel prices at the pumps, Prime Minister Gaston Brown says it's due to rising international oil prices. Prime Minister Brown says because West Indies Oil Company buys fuel at spot, it pays the market value at the point of purchase. Even though Sol, for example, may have had product or products in their tank that they purchased uh, months ago at a lower price, because they sell at spot, we had to pay the price at the time. And when that shipment came in just over a week ago, hmm. it so happened um, that the price um, per barrel was 146 US dollars. This prompted the government to increase gasoline prices at the pumps from $12.50 to $15.70 per gallon. Diesel also moved from $12.20 to $15.50. Saturday, during his weekly radio program on Point FM, the Prime Minister provided a breakdown of the price build-up from the last shipment. It shows the government received consumption taxes of $2.05 for gasoline and $0.63 for diesel. The gasoline product price, which began at $11.32, ended at $15.70 after accounting for various costs, including margins from importers, wholesalers and dealers. The next shipment assuming the price is on the uh, 100 US or even just over 100 US dollars um, when it gets here, when it would have paid for it, then it will give us some leverage to reduce the price then. The Prime Minister says he doesn't anticipate the price will rise above 146 US dollars, but says if it does, the government will either have to take a loss or increase the price again. On the international scene, with Russia's invasion of Ukraine now in its fourth week, Ukrainian refugees across Europe are beginning to settle into a new life, far different from the one they left behind. More on this report from Al Jazeera Television. Some 2,000 kilometers away from home, people in this tiny Italian village have opened up their homes and businesses to the women and children fleeing the war in Ukraine. On the sixth day since President Putin started this war, we decided to leave our homeland because we were afraid, not for ourselves, but for the children, for their future. 
In a few days, they would be without electricity, without gas, without water. How can you explain that to them? These two sisters-in-law fled Lviv, leaving their husbands behind. After three exhausting days of travel, they arrived in the Italian town of Belmont and Sabina, home to around 50 residents. They were welcomed in by Giacomo and his wife Patrizia, who own a local bed and breakfast and have put the place on standby to offer them a home. It seems normal to me. Maybe it's not the best in the world, because we're sheltering them with children. But the first thing that came to my mind is to make this available to them. First, we solve their emergency situation, which must be terrible. The two women are among the 58,000 Ukrainians who have fled to Italy since the war began. Tanya told her daughter that their escape from war was a trip to visit her grandmother, a friend of the bed and breakfast owners who also live in the small Italian town. At the beginning, she was enthusiastic, but now Tanya says she's beginning to miss her dad. Her aunt Katia hasn't lost faith and believes the war will come to an end soon. We believe in future we will be able to return home and rebuild a new life. We will renew our economic life. We will rebuild the country. Our future will be as peaceful as it was before. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.